With social media and the internet, it can be really easy to get jealous and depressed and discouraged when you see others who are showcasing their best online and then you look at your own stuff and you're like, oh man, mine's not that good. And in relation to homesteading, when you see somebody post the best view of their garden on Instagram or they're showcasing their new chicken coop that they just built or bought and you just get discouraged. And I encourage you, from my personal experience, don't get discouraged by these things. Instead, just focus on what you can do and focus on making progress yourself. Not perfection, nor trying to keep up with the Instagram Joneses. And when we look back at history, there's not picture-perfect chicken houses and chicken coops that we see. No, these people were just focusing on survival. They didn't have Instagram and Pinterest to, to, to compare each other's chicken coops to. No, they were just focusing on living. And they, had, they built all kind of contraptions for their animals to live in just because, once again, their focus was on survival, not on picture-perfect pretty. And over the years that I've been a homesteader, the goal has been to gradually make progress and improve my systems and my structures over time. And with ducks in particular, I've been raising them for about eight to ten years now, working with them and learning, and during this time they've lived in all different types of contraptions. <laughs> but recently I've had these ideas floating in my mind of how to create some new builds for them to improve their housing and my duck system. So I've been saving some scrap materials on the farmstead for a time such as this, a time that it's time to actually start taking these ideas and creating some prototypes. These pieces here, these pallet looking things, well, they were part of a wooden box that some time ago we got some large equipment in. And then I was like, hmm, we can probably recycle some of that wood on a project one day. Well, today is one of those days that we're going to try to recycle this wood. So for my prototype duck mobile duck house, I'm going to try to repurpose this wood here. We just have to disassemble it. And it's pretty... It's kind of heavy. We'll start off with our Gorilla Crow pry bar, whatever this thing's called. Just start pulling it apart. All right. <laughs> So I go ahead and hammer that in. Whew. It's probably not the ideal time to be doing this. Just a little bit hot out here. Keep your accuracy. 
Yep. There we go. Maxim's ready. Let's, Let's do, do this. Yeah. Oh man, this piece right here, mine's gotta be a stubborn piece. Earlier it said the temperature was 80 degrees in the real field, 95. I don't know what it is now. Come on. Last part. It's the last part we have to do. Last part. Last four by four here. Come on. Yeah, the last four by four. We did have some rats under there. Probably been running away in terror. All the thunder that's going on here, right, Josiah? Yeah. They're being terrorized! <laughs> <laughs> Find a home somewhere else. Watch out. Excuse me. All right, with all the wood off, I should be able to flip it over now. We'll just have to see how many rats are under here. Hopefully the rat king doesn't come out at me. <laughs> what do we got? Anything under there? Somebody's oh, crap. Rat. Uh, that was like a ham king. It got squashed. Next one, what we got? Anything? Yep, there's some rats. And some babies. And a bush rat. And another one. Woo! <laughs> They're running. Daddy, we need the chickens. <laughs> I'll get a shovel. Let Daddy do it, Michael. Alright, what else we got? Oh, we got some more. Woo! Freaking them out. Alright. I got the shovel. Thank you, pal. Oh, look at the babies. It must be sinister or something because the kids enjoy seeing these little baby ones. <laughs> the chickens are taking them out. Kind of like it too, I can't. Wow. The rats. They can be a noose. Here, chick, 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 here, chick, 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 chick. Get them. Oh man, they got it. Taking them out. Got a little hot. I don't feel dizzy. Not cramping. Not profuse sweating. I can speak normal. <laughs> At least I can somewhat. Most of the time. It's got a little hot. You take a time out. Go down a little bit. Then we get some water and some electrolytes. Oh, Since you guys been working outside really hard, we'll give you a nice cool treat. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Ta-da! There you go, Micah. Thank you. Okay. Mmm, what is it? It's popsicles that Josiah and I made with Greek yogurt, some tropical protein powder from Just Ingredients, 
pineapple, and bananas. Yeah, chunks of pineapple in there. Pineapple and banana. Because it was so hot that day, we weren't able to make any more progress with building anything with our scrap materials. So not too long after that, we went on a trip to Polyface Farms. And they're not known for their ducks, but they had some ducks there. And they had a DIY duck nesting box that really captured the essence of one of the projects that I've had in my mind. So as soon as we got back, I was like, it's time to start working on one of my duck builds. Even though I had scrap material on hand, I did have to go to the hardware store to get a few extra pieces. And then we got started on the build. Let me see here, let me see here. There's a number of things I need to figure out with my duck shawl or mobile duck nesting box. I'm not sure what I'm gonna call this thing. Uh, if you have any ideas for what I should call it, let me know in the comment section below. I'd love to hear those ideas. But the overall goal for and concept for this is for it to be something that's mobile, like a chicken tractor, but for it to be a place where the ducks lay their eggs. And from my experience, as well as others, Ducks prefer to lay on the ground or as close to the ground as possible. With the exception of, of Muscovies, they'll lay up in higher areas and nesting boxes and things like that. But for the most part, most egg laying ducks prefer to be low. So that's the plan. But I gotta figure out a few things. Like, what are the dimensions of this thing going to be? All right. So a number of us crazy homesteaders like to use these milk crates here for nesting boxes. And I've seen as many as three chickens get in this thing all crammed in trying to lay eggs. And uh, probably about a, a duck and a half or so could fit in here. But most of part, this is gonna give us the size roughly that we need for our nesting boxes. And I wanna do two rows here on our duck shawl here. So I gotta get that to work. But also, I want it to be where I'm just using one of these pieces here of roofing. And this roofing is 25 inches wide. So, with that roof measurement in play, will we be able to do what I'm trying to do? I don't know. But let's first go ahead and see if we can cut this piece here. I want it to go in between the wood. So we got 25 inches. So these are two and a half, which we're isn't two and a half anymore. There's roughly an inch and three quarters these days. So deduct an inch and three quarters and plus another inch and three quarters and you have three and a half. And then you subtract three and a half from 25 and then you're left with what? 21 and a half. So that's the measurement I need for the piece to go in between the two studs there. Thank you. 
Mike, if you go ahead and put on the other wheel there, that addition right there will make it even easier to move our duck shawl around. I did have to go to the hardware store to get a few pieces. I'm gonna try my best to use as much as I can of recycled materials here from the homestead. We also have some recycled and leftover surplus wood from extended family projects here. And I need to find a piece that is pretty wide. That's, let me see here. This piece is, let's see here, 11 inches. All right, so if it's low enough, it should work. Excuse me. Go and set it down. Okay. 
And that leaves us with a depth measurement similar to what I've used in our nesting boxes that we got at the scrapyard. <laughs> it's a long story, we'll try to make it short. So, a number of years ago, I was at the scrapyard, saw a guy scrap metaling a number, a bunch of commercial chicken nesting boxes. And I was like, I'd like to have some of those. So I bought some from him and we've been using them here. However, it doesn't work out really well for our context. They're, they're a little weird to move around here, but I've learned a lot with using them. The measurement for the nesting boxes are, they're 10 inches wide and 13 inches deep. And our ducks have laid in those nesting boxes before. So I'm like, hmm, we can go with a similar measurement for this prototype here and let's see how it works out. in the corner there. Let's see, we'll make it a little spacious for them. So I think I like that. It gives us four nesting boxes on each side. Ten and a quarter by eighteen. Let's do on the inside of here. Gather it. And try to put that one in. Yeah. Keep holding it with your hand like I've showed you before. Yep. Right here. Put your hand on. Your hand's gotta get started. Oh. Good. Out here on the homestead, doing projects in various places. Sometimes you just gotta do what you gotta do and sometimes it may not be ideal or the perfect thing <laughs> that, that Bob Vila or somebody would be showing on their channel. But for things like ripping wood, one of the things that works for me is cutting it in mulch. Putting a piece of wood 
and just ripping it, which means cutting the piece in two, cutting it in the mulch, not in the ground where that dulls your blade, but the mulch where the wood chips and things are just loose and uh, saves my blade. Makes things easier, gets the wood cut without having to do some kind of elaborate setup each time that I need to rip some two by four. For a little bit there, I was starting to think that maybe I wouldn't use these pieces, but I am going to use them, have a need for them. Let's see here, which one do we need? Let's move this one out of the way. Pick a smaller piece. Yeah. Alright. That might work here. day but we're done we're done with this project you think you still move that now Micah let's see there you go take it down to the dust let me give it a shot Shock. Are you all right? Did you see me? Yeah. I went rolling over. You did. Open up the other one. Two, please. Hold up. Hold up. Oh, oh, oh. Hope they put this thing to the test. You. <laughs> So after doing all that work, would the ducks even like it? Would they even use it? Well actually, the first day, they got in there and they were checking it out and expecting it. Seeing if they could get comfortable in there. And then the second day, they actually started laying some eggs in there. Look at here. Laying in the nesting box, just like we wanted to. It's working, it's working. Yes. So based on my experience, I can confidently say that this design should work really well for egg laying ducks in a pasture grade system like at Polyface as well as a stationary system that could also include free ranging time. And over the years I've done a combination of both, but since I have mostly had limited access to pasture, we've mostly had to do a stationary system with free ranging times. So what does that look like? Well, first off, since ducks, some people don't know this, ducks primarily lay their eggs at nighttime and in the morning time. So during those times, we'll keep them in a protected area with electric fencing, but in the afternoon, I'll let them out to free range, eat grass, play in the pond, and then bring them back in towards the late afternoon, early evening to lay their eggs once again. But I do like to encourage people to consider ducks for eggs. A lot of people think of chickens, but ducks can also be a great source of eggs on a homestead or farmstead. And speaking of ducks, 
I'm also really excited because we have some more ducks coming here in the mail here pretty soon that I just ordered from Murray McMurray Hatchery. In addition to egg laying ducks, I also raise ducks for me as well. So super excited about that. And stay tuned because I have these other ideas for builds coming up that I plan to put in place and start working on. So stay tuned for that.